and he didn't even allow him to go out with others to you know, take care of the sheep or all those things they were doing at that particular time. He chose him as you know, a, a favorite. So, and then, you see along, Joseph started to have a dream. Started to have a dream. He was you know, discussing the dream with his father and with his brothers, and they were not happy. He dreamed that uh, they went out to cut sheep, and then his brother's sheep were bowing down to his own. And then he said he saw the sun and the moon and the star bowing down before him. That means he's going to be higher than all of them. That is when his father, his mother, and his brother were going to bow down for him. I mean, be as human being, they didn't like that. Oh, so we are going to serve you. You are even we are older than you. We are going to serve you. So the brother they didn't like that. So they start started planning how they're going to hurt him. So and then the opportunity came one day when they were in the field. And the father asked uh, Joseph to go and check on uh, them, how they were doing, to go and give them, get them, them some food. So Joseph obeyed, and they took the food, and as he was going, I mean, the brothers saw him afar off, and they saw him, oh, they were happy. See that dreamer coming? Now let's kill him. So we'll see what will, what will come out of his dreams. So they planned how they were going to kill him, so that his dream would not come to pass. They want to thwart his dream. They want to destroy whatever plan God has got for him. So, but God used the elders of them, Reuben, who said, no, don't let us kill our brother. Let us, don't let us kill our brother. Let's just put him in, in a pit. So they put Joseph in a pit. Reuben planned to you know, save him and take him back alive to the father. But while he was away, the other brothers, you no, know, they took Joseph they sold him into slavery. They sold him into slavery. I say, oh, now as a slave, what is going to happen to all his dream? The dreams are going to perish with him. So they thought they have got, saw the end, seen the end of the dream of Joseph. But when God has a plan for you, nobody can trust your dream. Nobody can undo what God has planned to do in your life. So Joseph went, was sold into slavery. And then from one hand, he was passed to the other. From another hand, he was passed to the other. You no, know, until he ended up in a Potiphar's house. Potiphar was a, a, an officer of Pharaoh. And everywhere Joseph went, God was with him. God was with him. Anywhere he went, God was with him. When he, sp he stepped into Potiphar's house, everything in Potiphar's house changed. God's blessing started to be upon him. Everything he had continue to multiply. And Potiphar noticed that. See, wow. Since this boy came here, things have changed around here. You know, everything lay around some prospered. So Potiphar just gave him the control of everything in his house. You are the boss here. When I'm not here, you are the boss. Whatever you do, nobody will query you. So Joseph found favor everywhere he went. He found favor in Potiphar's house. But the devil planning to destroy his dream. He sent uh, Potiphar's wife, you no, know, who planned evil against him. He lied against him, and Potiphar, uh, Joseph found himself in prison. Joseph was imprisoned without cause. He did not you know, do anything that warrants being thrown in a prison. But all these things the devil is doing to thwart his dream, you know. He's doing all this thing to thwart his dream. So he was put in prison. And all along, he did not complain. He did not blame God. He did not say, well, oh, what's going to happen to all my dream? What, is, what am I seeing here? No, he didn't say that. He obediently went to prison. And when he got there too, God was with him in prison. God was with him in prison. In Genesis 39, that's why he went to prison. And in Genesis 40, in the prison, God was even still with him. Everywhere he went, God was with him. So, brothers and sisters, God is with you. God and God has a plan for you. You know, God said, "I know the plan I have for you, a plan for good and not for evil, to give you a, a, a future and a hope, or to give you the expected uh, e expectation." Yes, Jeremiah twenty-nine eleven. God has a plan for you. Like He had a plan for Joseph. I was with him everywhere I went, so he has a plan for you and for me. And when we 
stay in his will, when you stay in obedience to him, nothing can disturb it, that, that plan. The enemy may try, he may use people, you know, but they will always fail as the Lord lives. So the enemy used Joseph's brother to sell him into you know, slavery. From there, he used Potiphar's wife to get him into prison. Yes, now in prison, he still continue doing God's will. The prisoner, the head of the prison, also saw him that this is a, a, a different person. This is a different person. He made him also the head, head of all the prisoners. So everywhere he went, he just, God's hand was upon his life. God's hand was upon Joseph's life. So while he was in prison, still doing what he knew best to do, doing his best, his best in his ability. If he is given something to do, he would do it with all his heart, with all his power. He wouldn't complain, he wouldn't murmur. He would do it to the best of his ability. And they saw this, that the spirit, that the spirit of excellence was with him. And so even in prison, they made him the head of the prisoners. And while he was there, he didn't isolate himself, he didn't keep to himself. He was free, talking to all the other prisoners and telling them, you know, encouraging them and making himself available. Because all of them saw that God's hand was upon his life. So when two of the prisoners had a dream, you know, they, they came to him to, to tell him about uh, their dreams. The butler and then the baker of Pharaoh, you know, and they told him it's their dream, and then Joseph interpreted the dream to them. Exactly, because the spirit of excellence upon him, God was using him even to interpret dream because he lived for God. He was living in obedience. He did not complain. He did not murmur. He didn't blame God for whatever he's passing through. He still has hope that his dream will come to pass one day. His dream will come to pass one day because whatever God has promised is going to come to pass. All along the way, it might be rough. Things might be rough, but if you keep on holding on to God like Joseph did, you're going to get there. You're going to get there. You're going to get the fulfillment of those dreams. The enemy will not be able to thwart it. They will all fail. So Joseph kept doing what he needed to do. He was being kind, being obedient, and you know, just living his normal life. So those two uh, officers of Pharaoh came to him. He told him about their dreams, and he interpreted the dream to them. And exactly what he said came to pass in their lives. One was hung, was killed, and the other was restored to his position. And when the one that was restored was leaving the prison, Joseph told him, please don't forget me. When you get to where you're going, remember I'm still here. So the two of them left him in prison, but he was still there. Yet when they left, he didn't blame God, he didn't complain, he didn't murmur, he said, God, why me? Why am I still here? You know, this, all these people are gone now, I'm still here by myself. No, no, he did not do that. He did not do that. He had his eyes on the promised land. He had his eyes on the, you know, on the dream that they are going to come to pass one day. Okay, after some years, now in uh, Genesis chapter 41, so then it came to pass at the end of the two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he stood by the river, and suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows, five fine, good looking fats, and they fed on the middle. Okay. And then, I mean, just paraphrase it Pharaoh had a dream, and he was troubled by the dream. He saw seven fat, good looking cows on one side, and then he saw seven haggard looking cows on the other side. But to his surprise, the haggard looking one swallowed the fat ones. So he couldn't understand. So he was troubled. So he called all his officers to tell them about his dream. This is what I saw in my dream, and I'm terrified. What is this? What does this mean? Nobody was able to interpret his dream. No. So then the officer that uh, was released was in prison with Joseph who was released and was restored to his position, remember that when he was in prison, hey, Joseph interpreted his dream, and the interpretation was correct. So he remembered Joseph and said, oh, king, there's a man in prison who interpreted my dream when I was there, and the dream, whatever he said about me came to pass. Can we go and fetch him? 
So they went and fetched Joseph. They went and fetched Joseph. And uh, when he came, the king told him uh, his dream. And uh, everybody was happy. Now, Pharaoh has to ask him, now what are we going to do to solve this problem? God they told them there was going to be seven years of bumper harvest. There will be plenty in the land for seven years. You know. And then after that seven years, another seven years is coming that you're going to everything was going to be you no know, no. There'll be famine. There will be no food. There will be no harvest. So all those seven years of uh, abundance will be forgotten in the following seven years. So because it will be so bad. So now Pharaoh looks, what are we going to do? So Joseph gave them advice on what to do. That they should store food and then in the years of uh, bumper harvest, they should st be storage and store the food. So that in the year of farming, they will be using that food, they will be eating, you know, feeding from that food, selling it to people, so that people will not die of hunger. So seeing that, Pharaoh chose Joseph. Since God has given you the ability to interpret my dream and give you the ability to give me good advice to survive these years of famine that you predicted, so I'm choosing you to be the head, to be in charge of you know, doing everything you know, to make uh, all, everything work fine. In those years of uh, abundant harvest, build storage and store food, and when the years, when the years of famine is around, be in charge, sell people food to the people so that my people will not die of hunger. So Joseph was promote, promoted from prison into palace. He was made the prime minister of Egypt, the second in command to Pharaoh himself. That's the fulfillment of the dream he had been having, that everybody was bowing for him. He has had that dream when he was a child. Now as an adult, the you know, dream was fulfilled. He became the head of the whole of Egypt. And then from there his brothers and all the people around were coming to buy food from him. You can't get food without seeing Joseph. Everybody has to come to him. So it's when, when the brothers also were feeling the effect of the famine the where they were, their father sent them. Oh, we had that there was food there is food in Egypt. So go there and get food for us so that we will not die of hunger here. So the brothers came. He recognized them, but they did not recognize Joseph. He recognized them. Later, he made himself known unto them. You know, and he told them, well, God has sent me here. All you did, you did it to hurt me, but God has turned it around for good. The evil you planned for my life, God has turned it around for good. I'm Joseph, your brother. And so he made himself known unto them. And eventually, he brought his father and all his brother and all their you know, family and all their belongings, he brought them to Egypt, where he was the prime minister, where he was second in command to Pharaoh. So they came to live in Egypt, and God blessed them while they were there. So that's the journey of the Israelites, you know, from the call of Abraham until, until they got to Egypt. And Joseph established them in Egypt, and everything was fine. After many years, Joseph died, Jacob died, their father died, all the brothers died, and Joseph himself also died. Uh, and then, Pharaohs continued to come and go, come and go, and the Bible said that there came a time when a Pharaoh was, in play, was installed who did not know Joseph. He didn't even know about Joseph at all. He didn't hear about all those years God has used Joseph to feed people in Egypt. He didn't know about Joseph. Or maybe he pretended as if he didn't know. So when he came there, he just knew that the, uh, the children of Israel, even though they were in, in Egypt, they were different. God was blessing them. They were multiplying in number. They were multiplying in blessing. God's hand was upon their lives. So that Pharaoh was afraid. He was afraid. He said, wow, these people are just increasing in number. They are just multiplying like weed. Now there will come a time. If you are not careful, they are going to outnumber us. Then if there is war or anything, they might join our enemies. 
no, to fight against us. So Pharaoh was afraid. He says, call his people and say, what are we going to do to these people, to these Israelites who are just increasing in our land? They, are, no, they almost occupy our own land. What are we going to do to them? Then he devised a means of you know, trying to eliminate them one way or the other. He asked their midwives if any, a, a child is born to the Israelites, if it's a boy, they should just kill him. But if it's a girl, they should let him live. But God intervened. God intervened. God touched the heart of the midwives. They didn't do what uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh wanted, wanted them to do. They, re, they refused to kill the Israelites. Though the Israelites continue to multiply, they continue to increase in number, and God continues to bless them. You know. So, after some times, then they devise a mean of you know, making life difficult for them. They turned them to, to slaves. They didn't come there as slaves. They came there to settle. You know, came on the wing of Joseph, their brother, their son, to settle in Egypt. But now, after many years, Joseph is gone, and many pharaohs have come and gone. Then a pharaoh came who did not know Joseph, and who no plan to destroy the Israelites. So he couldn't do that. He didn't succeed in doing that. Then he tried to turn them to slaves. So let's use them as slaves. Let's make them walk, <coughs> you know, from morning till evening. So with little to eat, with little to, to feed. Maybe by doing that, you make their life miserable. Maybe with time they will, they will, be, they will be sick and they will die or something. Or maybe with time they will be fed off of this place and they will just leave and go somewhere else. He just wanted to get rid of them. He wanted to get rid of them because he was afraid of them. Because he knew that God's hand was upon their lives. He knew that God was blessing them. God was increasing them. So they were turned into slaves in Egypt. And they were in slavery for over 400 years, according to the scripture. So they were made to work from morning till evening with little to show for, for it. They walk under the sun every from morning till evening. You know. So the actually was so too much for them. Then they start looking unto God. They started groaning. That God have mercy. Oh God deliver us. God deliver us. Started looking unto God. And after many years, over four hundred years, God called Moses to go and deliver them. To go and take them out of Egypt. You know. Pharaoh refused to let them go, but God manifested his power. God you know, plagued the Egyptians. Frogs covered their lungs. Lies and flies covered their lungs. Boils on all, on all their bodies. Ails, locusts, locusts destroyed their crops. You know, they just turned to darkness, and then water turned into blood. So life was terrible for the Egyptians. And while the Egyptians were experiencing all this plague, the Israelites were here enjoying full, abundant life. They didn't experience any of those things the Egyptians were experiencing because God was with them. God was with them. And lastly, Pharaoh still refused to let the people of God go. Moses said, God said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, no, who is that God? Lastly, all the firstborn of the Egyptians and the, and their livestock, all of them died. They died. Now, when that happened, then Pharaoh knew that something has, has touched him. All the firstborn died. So just okay, go, 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 go now. Just release them to go. He released them to go. And as they were going, God granted them favor. The Egyptians gave them their gold, their jewelry, everything. So they left that land rich, rich in gold, rich in jewelry, and other good things. So they left abundantly blessed. So as they were leaving, Pharaoh changed his mind. So why did I let these people go? Who will be doing all the hard work they were doing for us? No, 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 I made a mistake. Let's go and get them back. So he saddled his horse and called all these you know, men of war, and they pursued after the Israelites. They were pursued after the Israelites. As they, as they were going, Israel looked back and they saw the host of Pharaoh behind them. Wow. Then, look, looking forward, they saw the Red Sea in front of them. So they were trapped. 
the Red Sea in front, the hosts of Egypt behind them, pursuing them, coming to, you know, take them by force back to, to the land of slavery. But God intervened again. God called Moses. Moses called upon God. God said, why are you calling unto me? What is in your hand? As a rod, stretch it for over Red Sea. And he did so. The Red Sea parted into two. And the people of God went on dry land. There's a wall of water here, wall of water there. They went in the dry land. And Egyptians, seeing that, they also rushed into the sea. And the sea you know, came back. And they were all drowned. Pharaoh and his old. God manifested his power in their lives. And he said, I'm taking you to a promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're going to inherit houses you didn't build. Farmland you didn't work for. That are not yours. I'm going to give all this unto you. Because of the promise. Because of the covenant I made with your forefathers, Abraham. So I'm taking you to the promised land. So about two million of them, according to the scripture, left Egypt following Moses, according to the will of God. So when they were about to get to the promised land, God gave them the instruction. My people, now you are about to go into the place I've promised your forefathers, Abraham. Now, this is what I want from you. Abraham obeyed my voice on the beginning. I called him. He didn't query me. He didn't question me. He obeyed. Absolute obedience. So, I expect that same thing from you too. As you enter into the promised land, if you will obey me, if you follow me like your grandfather Abraham did, it shall be well with you. I'm reading from uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all this blessing shall follow, shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body, and on and on. Blessed shall be the basket and your needing trowel. Blessed shall be you. It shall you be when you come out and when you go in. So he lists all those blessings. And all his, com all his demand from them is just obedience. Obedience. If you obey me, if you follow me, if you not run after any other God, because I'm your God. I've chosen you. You didn't choose me, I chose you. All I need for you to obey me. You know, all these blessings will come upon you, they will overtake you. And you, you just enjoy the promised land where I'm taking you. You just enjoy it. You just enjoy it. But on the other hand, if you choose to side with the enemy, if you choose to disobey me, if you choose to run after all other gods that are not gods, gods made with hands, with mud and stone and wood, I will not like that. Verse 15 says, But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God. That all these causes will come upon you and overtake you. So he told them all the blessings that will be theirs if they obey him. Then he told them again, but I can't make you do it. I can't force you to do it. I can't force you to obey me. If you choose to disobey me, if you choose to side with the enemy, if you choose to worship man-made gods, other gods, that the people of uh, Canaan, Canaan were worshipping, then you have brought causes upon yourself. So he started naming all the causes too that will come upon them. But now, that's why he concluded in chapter 30, verse 19 of uh, Deuteronomy that heaven and earth are hearing. I've said before you, blessing, if you obey me, blessings upon blessings. But if you disobey me, causes will follow. So, life. I've shown you life if you obey me and death if you disobey me. Now I'm pleading with you, choose life. God is pleading with them, choose life. Choose life. No. So that's where we get uh, that uh, topic, choose life from. So he's telling us today as children of God, as many as listen to me, choose life. Choose life. No, there's no other way than to choose life. The enemy has no good plan for us. The Bible says he came to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is that's that's his way of life. That is mode of operation. 
to kill, to steal, to destroy. He has nothing good. But God is love. God is love. He loved us so much that he sent his only son Jesus Christ to die for us. The Bible says even God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinner, while we were still doing things that displease him, while we were doing things that he asked us not to do, yes, he sent Jesus to come and die for us. Imagine that love. Imagine that love. That's why he says, choose life. Choose God. Choose his way. You know? That's a way that might seem good, you know, in, in, in sight of men. But the Bible says the end of it is destruction. So anything that is contrary to God, to his will, to his plan for our life, is destruction. Is death. But God wants us to choose life. Want us to choose life. So, children of God, let's choose life. Let's choose God. Let's embrace him. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came to die for us, came to give his life, that we might live, let's embrace him. Said the enemy came to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have abundant life. Abundant life. That's what he meant for us. And to have that abundant life doesn't cost you anything. doesn't cost you money. What you need to do is just come. Open your heart to him. Believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord and confess him with your mouth. I will say, if you do that, you will be saved. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. And last uh, Wednesday, we talked about the use of our tongues. We started about the use of our tongues. You see, God has given us tongues. Those, the tongue is a small member of our body. Like we saw in uh, James chapter 3, it's a small member of our body. It's eating in our mouth. But it has a lot of effect. A lot of effect. It's what we use to swallow, to, to bring food into our, into our body. But at the same time, it's what we use to speak out. And it is in that speaking that, you know, we can obey God or disobey God. In James chapter 3, it tells us that with the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. But it's not nice to be so. Suppose not to be so. So last uh, Wednesday we talked about we started about uh, the evil way of using our tongue, or the wrong way of using our tongue. We started by saying that you can use our tongue excessively. When you just talk and talk and talk and talk without thinking, you no, know, everything just coming out and just out of abundance of the heart. The Bible say, "Must speak." When we, speak, no, don't breathe our tongue, don't control our tongue, just let it. What flow like that? Many things will come. Lying will come out of it. Uh, <clears throat> what backbiting will come out of it? You know, cursing will come out of it. And the Bible says that is not supposed to be so. Our mouth is supposed to be to the glory of God, to be used to the glory of God, not to curse, not to backbite, and not to tell tales, not to bear tales. May God help us in Jesus' name. My God, we're going to continue with this. In the next episode, another way we can misuse our tongue is by speaking angry words. When we are angry, the Bible says, Be angry, but do not sin. When you are angry, that's not the time to talk. Bite your tongue and walk away. Bite your tongue and walk away. Because if you know what is going to come out, will not profit that person who is listening, will not do them good. Just bite your tongue and you know, walk away. Then, when everything is settled, when it does is settled, you can come back and talk. May God help us. Our time is up. May God help us. We're going to continue on the use of our tongue next Wednesday by God's grace. May God help us. May God shield us and protect us. As we, as we go into the new month of June, we're going to step in. We're going to cross over to that month. It shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. None of us will be one wanting in Jesus' name. No plan of the evil one concerning our life will stand in Jesus' name. Only God's plan will prevail in our life in Jesus' name. We shall live we shall not die. We shall continue to declare the glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with us. It shall be well with our children. It shall be well with the work of our hand in the name of Jesus. God will cause all his blessings to follow us and overtake us in Jesus' name. We shall be blessed at home. We shall be blessed on the, on the road. We shall be blessed on our, on our various jobs. And everything we lay hands on, we shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. And God bless you. And all of God. Uh, those of you who are watching lives, I appreciate you. God bless you. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, want to thank you again for this evening. We want to bless and glorify your name. You have spoken your word, mighty God. 
We thank you, Father. Lord, let your word do that which pleases you in our lives in Jesus' name. Father, today is the last Wednesday of the month of May. Father, we thank you. You have led us this far. As we cross over to month of June, Father, thank you because you will lead us. We put our hands in your hand, Father, Lord. You who knows the end from the beginning, continue to lead us, Father. Continue to guide us. Continue to guide us in the name of Jesus. I pray for all my listeners this evening, Father. No evil shall be for them in the name of Jesus. No plague will come near their dwellings in Jesus' name. They will choose life and your blessings will follow them. It will overtake them. They will be blessed at home. They will be blessed at work. They will be blessed on the road. Everywhere they go, they will be blessed. And people will see that they are blessed people. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers in the name of Jesus. For us. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. To you be all the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. And as many as have listened this evening who have not yielded their life to Jesus, Father, let today be the day of deliverance. Let them open their life and invite Jesus. Let them believe with their heart and confess Jesus with their mouth so that they will be saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you and God bless you. And we will see you again next weekend. And next Wednesday, stay blessed in Jesus' name. And uh, you can call us on this number, 443-631-2346, the number on the screen. And uh, for prayers or counseling or any other spiritual help, God bless you in Jesus' name. Have a nice evening. song